Quark, featuring the industry's first ARM Cortex M4 MCU plus EFPGA SOC with 100% open source tooling for both hardware and software. The purpose of this video is to show you how to install a bash terminal in Windows 10 instead of a virtual machine, to clone the QuickLogic Quark repository from GitHub, to provide a brief introduction to FreeRTOS, to install the ARM GNU GCC toolchain, compile the Hello World demo program, download and run on the QuickFeather board, edit the splash screen on the Hello World program, recompile and run on the QuickFeather board. I don't plan to cover how to install the tiny FPGA programming tool because that is covered in my other video. If you're stuck with using a Windows machine, one option instead of a virtual machine is to enable a bash terminal in Windows 10. I'm not suggesting this is the best method, but it enables you to quickly and easily switch between bash and Windows and share resources. Windows 10 supports a bash terminal, but you need to make a few changes to the settings first of all. First by going to Apps and Features, Program Features, Turn Windows Features on and off. If you scroll to the bottom of this, you need to ensure your Windows subsystem for Linux is enabled. If you enable this, you then need to reset your machine to ensure that it's configured correctly. As soon as the reboot is completed, you then need to find a Linux build on the Microsoft Store. You can search for Linux. I had some problems with the Ubuntu 2004 edition, so I'm going to install the 1804. Once the download is complete, you need to launch. And this will now take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video again. You now need to select a username and password. And repeat the password. You now have a Linux bash window enabled. So for example, you can look for file structure. And if you look carefully, you can see that you have a mount directory. And if you go into the mount directory, you can now see the drives that are attached to the machine. So I've got a C, a D, an F, a G, and a I drive. And from there, you can see the Windows based directory structure. FreeRTOS is an open source, real time operating system designed to be small and simple. The kernel itself consists of only three files. To make the code readable, easy to port, and maintain, it is mostly written in C. FreeRTOS provides methods of multiple threads or tasks, mutexes, semaphores, and other software timers. FreeRTOS is open source and covered by the MIT license agreement. The quickest way of getting started with FreeRTOS is from a vendor's SDK. Inside the QuickLogic Quark SDK, you will find all the source code to enable you to build the FreeRTOS kernel on the QuickLogic Feather board. Now let's clone the Quark SDK from the QuickLogic GitHub repository. Install the GNU GCC tools into the Linux environment. Make the Hello World program. Download to the QuickFeather board and run the code. Inside your Windows File Explorer system, type bash. And this will open a bash console window. From here, we can go into the QuickLogic Quark SDK GitHub repository. And we can see instructions on, first of all, how to clone. And as we clone this, you can see that it now appears in our Windows G drive. I can then 
install the GNU GCC tools, enter the password. This is where I had some problems with the uh, Ubuntu version 2004. Let's compile our first Hello World program. If you remember earlier, we cloned the Quark SDK from the GitHub repository. If we browse into QF underscore apps, the Hello World SW, and we can see the source code and the GCC project files. If we go into the project directory, and from here, if we open a bash terminal, We'll see a window open and if we then just run make we can see that the actual file program is being compiled whilst that is happening we will go to the quick feather board and we will reset the board and then apply the user configuration button and you'll see a slow green pulsing led this means that the device is used running the tiny FPGA and waiting for us to download some firmware. Inside this GCC project directory, if we go into output bin file, we will see the new file that we have created and we can copy directory. We're now going to load the binary we just created to the quick feather board. I've made the assumption that you've already installed the tiny FPGA programmer from my previous video. From that directory, we're going to run a command prompt and we're going to run a Python program and we're going to specify the port number, which in this case is COM40. We're going to load the M4 app. And this was the file location of the bin file we just created. We are now downloading the code to the board and then verifying back that everything is correct. Once this is complete, we reset the board. And we open up a PuTTY terminal, serial connection, COM port 40, 115-200, and then open. We then open up a console window where we can run a diagnostic and turn on the red LED. And then off again. I'll now make a modification to the code and change this hello world prompt. So I'm going to close the putty terminal and I'm going to go back into my Quark SDK directory, QF apps, hello world software, go into the source code, open up my favorite, open up my favorite editing tool. And in this line here, I'm going to change it to
save the file. I already have the bash terminal set up for the make, so I can just remake the project. I need to put the quick forward board back into programming mode. And now download the binary that we created to the board. Reset the feather board. Open a putty window. We can now see that this has changed from Hello World to my first program. <laughs> 